I'm going to talk about the concept of sovereignty uh, very generally, which is associated with the upcoming Deccan um, and uh, sovereignty is one of four principles that govern heaven. Um, I guess to to step back for a second. So we've entered the fall, uh, the birth of Mary, and so in this period of time between uh, Mary's birth, September 8th, and the birth of Christ, December 25th, is the fall, and there are nine decans uh, for, and th this is really, this era is really like the crown jewel of the system. Um, and, uh, like in principle, everything that is presented here is derived from other things um, that have already been covered. Um, but wh what it's being presented in these nine decans is a conception of what a new world a better a better world a radic radically better world where the human condition is resolved would uh, would look like and so there there are four decans devoted to that and then the four decans after that uh, are examining proposing uh, f operations that uh, can be used to transform this world into that world. So uh, these next four decans are eschatology, which means a vision of heaven or of how, the, how the world ends, how, how, how the current horizon is eclipsed by by a new one beyond comprehension and then the four decans after that uh, address metaperichoresis which is a practice of total art which um, which then I'm sort of trying to execute uh, in my own way uh, with my philosophy and music and art uh, and the, the way I kind of try to structure those as a ongoing, uh, you know, multifaceted uh, project. Um, uh, but there are as many versions of metaperichoresis as there are people uh, called to uh, to you know see things in more or less this way so um, so yeah and and then and then the final decan is the ten antinomies of apocalyptic humanism which are um, theses kind of um, anyway that's not that significant but um, yeah so uh, so, so I'm excited to get to really dig in to these four concepts, sovereignty, hierarchy, emancipation, individuation. Uh, the new liturgy album is sort of, it, it is devoted to these as well. Um, each side of the double LP is devoted to one of these four ideas um, and the first is sovereignty and um, what I'll say about sovereignty for now in general is that first of all it you know it's ultimately a mystical idea um, it can't be derived from anything in the world 
and that's something that a lot of philosophers would not agree with but that's because they're not seeing things clearly or squarely or being honest um, at the most general level sovereignty uh, first of all it's in opposition to um, I guess see what I like submission or something um, like being um, let's see yeah what is the opposite of sovereignty anyway sovereignty is self-rule and then uh, you know as as opposed to uh, serving something else and um, in in terms of desire um, another great pair of opposition uh, opposition pair of terms for this is autonomy versus heteronomy and this cuts across a couple of different contexts there's a personal version of this um, there is a social version of this and the social and the political there's kind of a gradation between those um, and then there's a cosmic version so you know a, uh, a, a f physical physical version um, and I'll definitely devote a single video to each of those regimes of sovereignty or the possibility of sovereignty um, but at its core the idea is that um, you know what's bad what's enslaved ultimately self-destructive and destructive and just you know fallen not the right thing is heteronomy and that is when uh, your source of motivation comes from the outside and it and it um, and it comes from the outside in a way that is by that fact sort of disordered or chaotic um, uh, what's better is autonomy and that's when desire comes from the inside it comes from um, you know one's own vision uh, you know one's own actual interests uh, that are like seen clearly um, and you know there's there's a it's like there is a I guess a, a part of just a mystical version of this idea is that we have a tendency to be um, addicted to heteronymous desire and you know and you know, it, it's an addiction it's like we want we want to sort of keep keep at it um, out of sheer habit that like it's painful to sort of kick the habit uh, even though part of us may really realize that the habit actually isn't a good thing and and, and this can be scaled this can be taken in so many different directions um, but maybe the the easiest clearest way to think about it is in terms of like literal addiction um, uh, which is the least subtle version of this maybe um, and there's th there's this delusion right it's like there's the addiction which is not re representational it's uh, effective it's it, it's habitual uh, it's sort of in an entrainment a sort of process of uh, uh, you know or you know orbiting around something um, and then but there's a representational dimension which is um, delusional justifications um, fantasies you know like oh if I just keep doing this uh, I'll hold off for now and I'll stop later or 
I'll stick with this for now because it will get me to a place where I won't need it anymore and I'll be better off then. Um, you know, or uh, I have no choice but to do this because um, I'm not strong enough to change it or um, uh, it's, too, it's too painful to not have it in some way. So there's this delusion uh, in, involved in heteronomy and uh, habit. And another thing about the habit aspect of it is that it's a passive habit. So there, there's a dynamism to it. Uh, the more repetitions of cessation of the habit, the less satisfying it is. And so you need more and more. Eventually it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work the way that it did at first any longer. Um, and uh, there is an opposite kind of habit which is an active habit and it is inverted it, it doesn't feel good at all at first um, and uh, it doesn't uh, in terms of the representational aspect of it it doesn't look attractive um, but then by choosing to sort of uh, have the willingness to continue to pursue it, uh, um, it starts to feel better and it starts to look better. Um, and it's like you can sort of um, emerge, uh, you can sort of ripen out of this, this kind of sick, sinful, false self and uh, emerge as this kind of like glowing, pure, gentle, sort of happy thing um, by engaging in these active habits. Uh, and, um, and, and, and yeah, and what I'm saying right now, you know, it's like, you, you, you'll, you'll find, you'll find religions talking about this, you'll find self-help books, you'll find, um, you know, political uh, but like there's there, there's lots of contexts where this kind of structure emerges um, and uh, and it, it's just not derived like you can't explain it through like genes or something or uh, or th through, through anything ontic uh, you know like situations in the world um, it's metaphysical and uh, there's one I think in a couple contexts, I've heard of it connected to um, uh, an opposition between a spiral and a circle. It's sort of this heteronomy also has to do with a circle where you're doing the same thing over and over again um, and nothing really changes, um, which I guess, I guess I don't love because I think that actually things get worse. Um, whereas the other way is a spiral. And in a spiral, there is room for new there's room for actual growth there's room for actual development um because you're you're in touch with like some something there's something real down there um so and you know my my terms for this is the 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 hyperborean the land where the sun never sets, it's just circling in the sky, and that's the bad one, that's sin, and the transcendental is the spiral, the one where the sun rises and sets, and there are seasons, um, and uh, that, that, um, that, that shifting in, in a deep sense is uh, intrinsic to a kind of flourishing. Um, and so, yeah, so sovereignty is a principle that, uh, you know, in heaven, like, I don't know exactly what I'm saying, you know, or what exactly I mean, but that, like, somehow that would be, like, there would be laws. Like, the same way there are laws about private property now, um, there would be laws about sovereignty instead. Uh, and it would be this kind of sovereignty. Um, and people would 
the way that like we think of of having an certain inalienable rights through the constitution you know there'd be a new constitution and we would have an inalienable right to the thing that i'm talking about here um but this is just one fourth of what um of what we have rights to we we have four rights sovereignty hierarchy emancipation individuation 